Justice, the Honourable Sherry Wanchuk, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Boots Fund, Honourable Justices from Bhutan, Honourable Justices from India and Pakistan, Distinguished Representatives from UNDP, the Asian Development Bank, Distinguished Judges, Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, Friends and Colleagues. I'm going to start with a confession. So I had the great privilege of meeting the Chief Justice in India two years ago at uh, one of the National Green Tribunal meetings. And I was just struck by the, the strength of this man. He was very sort of imposing. He, he'd just come from the gym and he was wearing his gym gear and, and sort of strolled over and introduced himself. And, and I complimented on his commitment to a, a healthy life. And he said, do you do any exercise? And I sort of looked at my sort of growing frame and realized that I don't, and but meekly said, well, I play a little bit of tennis. And he said, well, if you ever come to Bhutan, you are welcome. I will play tennis with you. Bring your racket. You must promise me. And I sort of meekly said, yes, I'll, I'll bring my racket. And I've been dreading this trick because <laughs> uh, I have a four-year-old and I told her never to tell lies. I have told you a lie, sir. I, I, I'm very bad at tennis. <laughs> my racket. So that's off my chest. Um, and now let me start by just saying how absolutely proud I am to be here with you and with our colleagues from the Asian Development Bank and partners. It's been a dream of mine to be in this country for many, many years. This is my first time. Bhutan is one of the smallest countries of the world, but your commitment to conservation and environment is biggest bigger than most. Uh, Chief Justice eloquently outlined the provisions of your constitution. This is world leading. I work, I have the pleasure of working with a Bhutanese colleague, Ms. Deshan Shering, who's our regional director. And when she was at the National Environment Commission, she did have a hand in the team that was drafting Article 5 of your 2008 constitution. And I think it is, and I've Aram and I have talked about this, it's one of the most beautiful constitutions in the world. When it talks about the obligations to protect, conserve, and improve your pristine environment, you're hard pressed to find those words in any other constitution in any other country. The commitment to enshrine the protection for 60% forest cover, there are only 10 countries in the world that get above 25% in terms of legal protection, and you're right at the top of that list. We've seen a very um, positive explosion of, of constitutions that now hardwire uh, a guaranteed right to a safe, clean, and healthy environment. Over 120 constitutions around the world now formally enshrine some form of environmental rights into their constitution, and again, Bhutan is leading the pack. So you are an excellent company, and you are leading that company. I say that because I want to bring it back to you, the judges, because you, judges, have an incredibly important role. These provisions give you the anchor to do your work. These provisions in the constitution, combined with the suite of environmental laws that you have in this country, really are the tools at your disposal to make these commitments and these objectives and these visions a reality. You are the last line of defense, it could be said, to ensure that these words on paper actually have meaning. Your decision to create the Green Bench uh, of the High Court, um, again, puts you in excellent company. Um, I was very... Uh, 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 warmed by your words about, indeed, whilst Bhutan does not have the body of jurisprudence uh, on environmental litigation yet, it will happen. As Bhutan develops, it will happen, and you are very well prepared by putting in place a specialised green bench to be prepared for that uh, uh, body of work when it comes. Again, you're an excellent company. Um, analysis by UN Environment, uh, shows that as of 2016, there are now 1,200 uh, 
specialized environmental courts, tribunals, green benches around the world. That number is growing all the time. I was in China just last week, and uh, it has established uh, over 976 uh, specialized environment divisions around the country. This is a remarkable commitment to uh, environmental rule of law. And you're on the right side of history when, when you push forward these reforms. Um, let me uh, not take up too much time, but just conclude by um, echoing uh, Aram's words. Um, we're very proud to, to, to work with you uh, in this journey. Um, the Asian Judges Network on Environment at the Asian Development Bank supports has been instrumental in bringing together judges from the region uh, uh, on these issues. Um, at UN Environment, we are uh, working with a newly established body, the Global Judicial Institute for the Environment. And um, we would very much welcome any opportunity to have a formal link with Bhutan uh, into that uh, institute at the appropriate time. Um, I started with a confession. I'm going to end with uh, something a little bit naughty and dobbing my friend. Uh, it is Erin's birthday today. So if you do have the opportunity, please do wish her a very, very happy birthday because she does deserve it. She's a very, very special person. Uh, as are all the colleagues at Asian Development Bank, and I want to just take the opportunity to thank them for their incredible work in setting up this workshop um, uh, group, and Cecile in particular. Uh, thank you very much for all of your work that you do. Thank you, and I look forward to a very productive workshop. <laughs>